So the whole purpose of this channel is to share some of the successes and failures around operating a portable sawmill. Today, we're gonna to take a look at one of the failures. I wanna show you this in hopes that you can prevent it from happening to you. From the time that I had the first thought about purchasing a sawmill to the day that I actually purchased it, it was about two years. So I did a lot of research. I thought I had every base covered. And I had most of them covered. But something came out of left field and it just surprised the heck out of me. I wasn't prepared for it. So I had a very specific purpose for this mill, at least early on. And that is we are building an off-grid cabin and I wanted to mill certainly all the timbers, probably a lot of the other lumber. So I started by milling all the six by six timbers that we need. And they came off the mill and they actually looked really good. So I thought I was doing the right thing and I milled those six by sixes and then I put them in our barn and stacked them and stickered them. Again, thinking I was doing the right thing. And that was probably somewhere in the uh, February time frame. We're here in Florida, winters are mild, usually below 80 degrees. And everything was fine for a period of time. One day I went into the barn and all of a sudden mold showed up, green mold over all of the lumber that I just milled. So let me show you what that looks like. So this is a two by four that I've recently milled, obviously in good condition and no mold growing on it. This, on the other hand, is a two by four that I milled. I stickered this and put it in the barn, kept it out of the rain and I still had very significant mold growth. So the question is why? Again, kept it under cover, stickered it. But as I found out, that is not good enough. So there's a forum online called the Forestry Forum. If you're not already a member, you really do need to check it out. It is a wealth of knowledge. There's guys on there that just have been in this business for decades, and they're willing to share everything they know about uh, portable sawmills, sawmilling, uh, lumber processing, drying, just every topic around forestry and, and logging. At any rate, uh, one of the things that I learned is that it's not enough just to cover and sticker your wood. In some cases, particularly in areas where there's a high humidity, you need to run fans over that wood to help prevent the growth of mold. So I did just that. I got some box fans, cheap box fans, and got some air flowing across the stickered and stacked lumber. And uh, in a short period of time, the uh, mold uh, stopped growing. Now I will say though, prior to putting the fans on, I did hit it with some bleach. And I think obviously that, that stopped and killed the mold. But if I didn't have the fans blowing across the stickered wood, that mold would have came back quickly. So I'm gonna show you the, the setup that I have and it's just very, very simple but it has, uh, so far, worked very well for me. So here we are in my pole barn. As you can see, I've got the uh, lumber stacked and stickered. I mean, is it perfect? No, but I think it's um, adequate. And on the left side, I've got two box fans, just cheap box fans from Walmart and there's a constant flow of air 24 seven across this uh, stickered lumber. And so far, and it's been about two weeks uh, since I've got this airflow moving across it, I am not seeing the return of the mold. So hopefully that's gonna solve this problem. 
Ideally, I would have a open air shed where air can get through all four sides, but I just don't have that. And so I have to work with what I have, and this pole barn is um, the, really the next best solution to having this material outside and just covered with tin. So I hope that helps someone today. Like I said, this came out of left field uh, for me. And maybe if I did a little more research, that would not have been the case, but it did. And I don't want anybody to be surprised if it happens to them. You just need to be prepared. You need to have a plan for what to do to process your lumber after you mill it. I mean, you've put so much work into doing the milling, you also have to put the effort into ensuring that the material is um, stable and does not mold. Now, obviously those of you that live in drier climates, you know, certainly in the desert uh, west, you're probably not gonna have this problem. But certainly here in the southeast, um, and probably even up into the mid-Atlantic states where it's pretty humid, you're, you may run into this. And so, again, have a plan. Uh, don't be discouraged. We just got to come up with a workaround so that um, you can get back to milling and feel good about the end product. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.